right, boys and girls. Um, today we're going to continue our read aloud, the BFG. And if you remember from Friday, we stopped in the middle of a chapter. So we are in a long chapter, and this chapter is called Dreams. And so we just ended one of the dreams that Sophie was reading out loud, and that was whenever um, the person um, pressed on their belly button and they became invisible. So then they went down and they saw their least favorite teacher outside and they, sh they shouted boo and the teacher ran away. And that was um, the last part that we read on Friday. That's pretty ridiculous, Sophie said. All the same, she couldn't resist reaching down and pressing on her own tummy button to see if it worked. But nothing happened. Dreams is very mystical things, the BFG said. Human beings is not understanding them at all. Not even their brainiest professors is understanding them. Has you seen enough? No, oh, just this last one, Sophie said. This one right here. And then she started reading. I has written a book and it is so exciting nobody can put it down. As soon as you has read the first line, you is so hooked on it, you cannot stop until the last page. In all the cities, people is walking in the streets, bumping into each other because their faces is buried in my book and dentist is reading it and trying to fill teeth at the same time. But nobody minds because they is all reading it too in the dentist chair. Drivers is reading it while driving and cars is crashing all over the country. Brain surgeons is reading it while they is operating on brains. And airline pilots is reading it and going into Timbuktu instead of London. Football players is reading it on the field because they can't put it down. And so is Olympic runners while they is running. Everybody has to see what is going to happen next in my book. And when I wake up, I is still tingling with excitement at being the greatest writer the world has ever known until my mummy comes in. And says, I was looking at your English exercise book last night. And really, your spelling is atrocious. And so is your punctuation. What is punctuation? Hmm, hopefully you're thinking in your head, oh, I know, that's actually punctuation, right? And here is the picture on this one. So it's everyone reading that book. That's enough for now, the BFG said. There is dillions more, but my arm is getting tired holding you up. Hey, what are those over there? Sophie said. Why have they got such tiny labels? That, the BFG said, is because one day I is catching so many dreams, I is not having the time or energy to write out long labels. But there is enough to remind me. Can I look? Sophie asked. The long-suffering BFG carried her across to the across the jars that she was pointing to. Sophie read them rapidly, one after another. I is climbing Mount Everest with just my cat for company. Another one said, I is inventing a car that runs on toothpaste. Another one says, I is able to make the electric lights go on and off just by wishing it. So there are the pictures from that page. I is only an eight-year-old little boy, but I is growing a splendid bushy beard and all the other boys is jealous. I is able to jump out of any high window and float down safely. I has a pet bee that makes rock and roll music when it flies. And there are pictures on that one, too. What amazes me, Sophie said, is how you ever learned to write in the first place. Ah, said the BFG, I has been wondering how long it is before you is asking me that. Considering that you never went to school, I think it's quite marvelous. Sophie said. How did you learn? 
The BFG crossed the cave and opened a tiny secret door in the wall. He took out a book, very old and very tattered. By human standards, it was an ordinary sized book, but it looked like a postage stamp in his huge hand. One night, he said, I is blowing a dream through a window and I seize this book lying on the little boy's bedroom table. I wanted it so very badly, you understand, but I is refusing to steal it. I would never do that. So how did you get it? Sophie asked. I borrowed it, the BFG said, smiling just a little, just for a short time. How long have you had it? Sophie asked. Oh, perhaps only about 80 years, the BFG said. Soon I shall be putting it back. And that's how you taught yourself to write? Sophie asked him. I is reading it hundreds of times, the BFG said, and I is still reading it and teaching new words to myself in how to write them. It is the most scrum diddlyumptious story. There's a picture on this one. So remember, they said this book is a normal size book to us, but um, compared to the BFG, it looks like a little stamp. Sophie took the book out of his hand. Nicholas Nickelby, she read. By Doll's Chickens, the BFG said. By who? Sophie asked. Just then, there came a tremendous noise of galloping feet from outside the cave. What's that? Sophie cried. That's all the giants zip fizzing off to another country to guzzle human beings, the BFG said. He quickly popped Sophie into his waistcoat pocket then hurried to the cave entrance and rolled back the stone. Sophie, peeping out from her spy hole, saw all of the nine fearsome giants coming past at full gallop. Where is you off to tonight? shouted the BFG. We is all of us flush bunkling off to England tonight, answered the flesh lump eater as they went galloping past. England is a luxious land and we is fancying a few nice little English chittlers. I, shouted the maid masher, is knowing where there is a giggle house for girls and I is guzzling myself full as a froth blower. And I know where there's a boggle box for boys, shouted the guzzle, guz, gizzard gulper. All I has to do is reach in and grab myself a handful. English boys is taking tasting extra look swishy. In a few seconds, the nine galloping giants were out of sight. What did he mean? Sophie asked, poking her head out of the pocket. What is a giggle house for girls? He is meaning a girl's school, the BFG said. He will be eating them by the bundle. Oh no! Sophie cried. And boys from a boys' school, said the BFG. It mustn't happen, Sophie cried out. We've got to stop them. We can't just sit here and do nothing. There's not a thing we can do, the BFG said. We as helpless as horse feathers. He sat down on a large craggy rock near the entrance of his cave. He took Sophie from his pocket and he put her beside him on the rock. It is now quite safe for you to be outside until they is coming back, he said. The sun had dipped down below the horizon and it was getting dark. All right, I'm going to stop there for today. Um, and our next chapter is called The Great Plan. All right, boys and girls, you may get out a book to read or you may do listen to reading if you have all of your ar points you can do reading for fun or you can listen to reading for fun if you do not have all of your ar points for this quarter then you need to be reading for ar and taking ar tests now make sure you're concentrating on those tests okay i want to keep that ribbon don't you
Okay, so let's make sure we concentrate on our test. All right, I will see you guys soon. Bye.